This would be the brain? Huh? Can we eat that? I'm no stranger to eating exotic ocean creatures. There's no way it's still alive. Oh! <gasps> it bit the spoon! But in this episode, we're delving deep into the world of the weird. <laughs> Chowing down on this. Something I didn't even know could be eaten by humans. Not your classic bar nuts, not corn nuts. It's jellyfish. Today, we're venturing across Vietnam to take on one of this country's most unique regional delicacies. This little butthole of a jellyfish came up to you, stung you, and it's like, hey, guess what? We took out you and your whole extended family. Go back, it has a butthole. We'll be trying jellyfish served up three ways with three vastly different price tags attached. Oh my God. You getting high over there? From affordable. This is the first time I have a meal in a bucket. To very, very expensive. When I think fine dining, I don't usually think about jellyfish. Can you talk about that? all cooked up in ways you have never seen before. Is that a jellyfish dessert? It all starts here. Where are we? We are in uh, Nam Dinh. Nam Dinh! What's a Nam Dinh? It's a province. Nam Dinh is a coastal province in northern Vietnam. With over 44 miles of coastline, this province is one of the biggest names in Vietnam's fishing industry. And we're here today to try one of their distinct delicacies. What experiences have you had with jellyfish? It stings me. You got stung? Oh my god, yeah. How bad did it hurt? It hurt really bad. Did someone pee on it? What? Well, in the America, we say to pee on it, but that's been disproven. So today is kind of like payback for you. Oh, yeah! Yeah. I can't eat it. In case you don't know, a jellyfish is not a fish. It's also not a jelly. More than 92% of this creature's body is made up of water. The rest is protein. They may look like an innocently discarded Walmart shopping bag, but one sting from a jellyfish can be devastating or even fatal. Oh! What it is? In my head, jellyfish doesn't look like that. Our first stop today, a site you don't often see. A large processing facility specializing in jellyfish. So that's like the cap, the top, like the mushroom of the jellyfish. Uh, this is the hand of the jellyfish. This is a leg. It has hands and legs? So this is uh, a brain of the jellyfish. I didn't know they had a brain. Actually, the brain is what the local people here call the jelly-like matter that connects the jellyfish's hat and its tentacles, where it keeps its venom. It can sting you and it would make you have like the kind of rash. Later, they would put it in like a briny liquid and it would be safe to eat. So if you eat it without putting it in a brine, is it gonna sting your mouth? It can even call you to go to the hospital. Oh, really? Here in Nam Dinh, jellyfish for eating is a thriving business. How much jellyfish do you put through this facility each year? 500 to 600 tons. Talk about jellyfish revenge, right? In order to preserve the jellyfish year round, they must be processed, going from this to this, where they're maintained in a 22% salt brining liquid. Right now, we're standing next to an enormous tank full of preserved jellyfish brain. It's time for my favorite question of the show. It will be very, very salty. So it's kind of translucent. It's rubbery. And if you squeeze it, it, it breaks apart. Wait, why don't you grab whatever piece of brain just kind of speaks to your heart? Ah! Oh my god, everything is big. Okay. Oh, okay, there you go. Mo, hi, hi bad, yo. yo. You can eat it, but I don't think you should. Here, their main jellyfish product is a simple recipe that turns these creatures into a drinking food. After being removed from the tank, these shredded jellies are washed three to four times to remove their intense saltiness. They're then marinated with a not too secret blend of garlic juice and pickling liquid. Are you ready for them to bring out the meal? Sure, let's go. It's actually just right here. This is it. We're eating out of a bucket today. Oh, hey. We're in the processing factory. <laughs> we gotta be quick. We have a competitor here. This one is the uh, cap, the head, the hat, the umbrella, the top part. Here you go. Fancy. Oh, it has a pickled kind of briny taste. I wonder if there's vinegar in there. Oh my God. You getting high over there? Cheers. Oh. The taste of garlic is very present. There's like a garlic liquid that it's been bathing in. How do you feel about that texture? I really like it. Really? Yeah, it's really fun. It makes sounds when you chew, yeah? Is that, uh, uh. Kind of like sea grapes. It holds its shape, but then when you bite through it, it becomes kind of brittle, splits apart, and then releases some of this garlic juice. 
Over here, we have the premium bowl. This goes for about twice the price. This one is full of arms and legs. Jellyfish arms and legs fetch more money thanks to their unique texture. Mm. Oh. It's still crunchy, but it has a very um, soft touch. This one is like you're chewing on something like, it's kind of uncomfortable, you know what I mean? But this one is pretty smooth. Oh uh, yeah, they're both uncomfortable for me. <laughs> the jellyfish itself has no flavor. Like tofu, it just takes on the flavor of whatever you put in there. I don't think it's any disrespect to the people here. It's just the ingredient itself. I blame the genre, species, genome, I can't remember. I blame the jellyfish itself, but very affordable, so that's good. This is great, but I really want to see this jellyfish in action, mingling with other food friends. So we've headed here, a local beer club. Oh, put her there. Yeah. A pleasure to meet you. What's your name? I'm Duk. 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 When do the people usually come to get highly intoxicated? Well, around 5 p.m. <laughs> We're like four hours too early. Located on the main street of Namdin City, here, a patron's level of sobriety may or may not impact their food ordering decision. How old were you when you first tried jellyfish? Was it ground up into your baby food? Right, I'm good, I? It's about the time I had my first Hot Pocket. Hot Pockets. Can you tell me about the recipe you guys have? The most common way is to make salad, and he also recommends to stir fry them. Stir fry jellyfish. The name speaks for itself. Garlic, homemade seasoning sauce, and loads of jellyfish. Give it a stir, add some colorful vegetables, stir a bit more, and serve. We are in an empty beer club. Funny, I sent me a Saigon. Because <laughs> we're out of Saigon already. That's super funny. This is kind of a stir fry. They've dressed it up with a lot of other friendly, colorful ingredients. Pineapple, carrot, alone chili. If you just plopped it down on the table and I was pretty buzzed up, I would think, oh, stir fried noodles. Should we try it out? Yeah, cheers. All right, cheers. Mm. I like the flavor. There's all the familiar stir fried type of flavors in there. Soy sauce, some delicious oils, oyster sauce, fish sauce, MSG. And then you're reminded that, yeah, it's still jellyfish. But I think it's really suitable for drinking food, huh? Just straight up crunchy. Like when you stir fry pork, uh, pork. Yeah. Who, you who are you talking to? Uh, the camera. <laughs> it's just sorry. me and you. Camera's on a tripod that also moves. I know exactly what it is. Remember that sea cucumber we have? The one that's breaking the jaw? Oh. Ah. But it's also a little sandpapery. You feel it when you chew and then it touches your tongue a little. It's kind of, yeah. Can we put that into a subtitle or a quote? Yeah. This dish costs around $7. So about seven times more expensive than the last thing we had. And I would say it's worth it. Agreed. I mean, uh, it's uh, better. It's seven times better. Jellyfish should not be relegated only to consumption with unrefined booze. Why not high-end jellyfish with a glass of wine? Right now, we're here at Chloe Gallery, a fine dining destination, to find out how far this unique ingredient can go. Uh, oh, rubber gloves. Uh, should we elbow in? Boom, elbow. Mr. Wang is the head chef here. He spent over 10 years as a chef in Japan, which had a spectacular impact on his gastronomical styling. When I think fine dining, I don't usually think about jellyfish. This seems like a really challenging ingredient to kind of make high end. Can you talk about that? He's thinking. It's really challenging for him to come up with fine dining food using the ingredients at jellyfish. It doesn't taste like anything. Right. <laughs> he would come by different premium ingredients like lobster or caviar. Oh, do you need to get that? It could be the CEO. Some feedback for the interview, how it's going so far. Our first taste of premium jellyfish, jellyfish butter, which consists of grilled cherry peppers, bell peppers, minced jellyfish, and lots of butter. Oh, that might be too much. Wait, wait, wait. Yo. Yo. Tangy. Creamy, spicy, an indecipherable amount of jellyfish. But I do taste that saltiness, but it's not usual salt. Sir, can you taste the jellyfish? He can smell and taste it. The very unique taste and smell of jellyfish. Me too, then. <laughs> Me too, yeah. Let's jump into our premium meal, starting with jellyfish soup. What is like a really redeeming quality of jellyfish? Mushroom, seaweed, diced tofu, and jellyfish make their way into a pale pumpkin serving vessel. He said it would be like the texture is kind of crunchy, it's fun to chew on. Filled with savory broth made from shredded fish. And it's unique, we can't forget about that, and I think that matters. Cinderella's carriage is then steamed for 10 minutes and finished with a drop of truffle oil. to jellyfish, all nervous system and no brain, like me. 
our first course inside of a pumpkin. It's a jellyfish soup, you could say. Kind of inspired by a Japanese miso soup. It's got some seaweed, mushrooms, please be cheese, but it's probably tofu. And jellyfish. Oh yeah, it's like miso. Nice, I like that, tastes good. But now, it's time to get a big hit of jellyfish. <laughs> the jellyfish still has that same crunchy, kind of sandpaper type consistency. It's got a roughness to it. It's a bit unrefined. It's like putting me in a fine dining restaurant. Well done, chef. Let's move on to course two. Seaweed dipped in batter and fried until crispy. Avocado. Diced and dressed with ponza sauce. Jellyfish, onion, cilantro, and sea grapes. Mixed well with ponza sauce. All coming together in a colorful assembly. Topped with salmon rub. We're making a steady progression here. We had a soup, and now this is kind of like an appetizer. Seaweed. Oh, crusty, crunchy, like bedrock of seaweed to hold all this stuff on top. I believe these are edible flowers. When's the last time you got flowers from a guy? And did you try eating them? <laughs> I think you could eat a rose. You just internalized the love that person was showing for you. Maybe. You ready? Ready. She is. Not a good food for a date. The jellyfish actually blends into this one more. It has a little bit of a smoky taste to it. Avocado's making it creamy. The salmon adds even more richness to it. It's really interesting. I've never had anything like this. It's like eating sushi. Like all the ingredients are here. It's not a sushi roll, it's a sushi pile. Jellyfish has to be one of the toughest ingredients I've seen people try to make luxurious. To me, I think it's even hard to just make it food. So yeah, he did a great job. Finally, the main course. Jellyfish soaking in ginger and chili sauce. Lobster cut in half and steamed through. Lingzi mushroom sauteed with onion. Now to bring it all together. Carefully molded saffron rice, Lingzi mushroom, then the lobster, and the sauced up jellyfish set on top. This is jellyfish elevated to its highest potential. Our final course today, lobster. It's almost like a jellyfish pasta just soaking in chili sauce on top of this lobster. I'm gonna get just a bite of the jellyfish. Big bite. Is that big? Yeah. It's a lot. <laughs> that actually is pretty potent. I almost taste that brininess, that really salty factor from the first place we went to today. Oh my God. <clears throat> you can eat it, but I don't think you should. Now we can dig into the tail. Yay. Look at this. That's quite a bite. All right, I've got some lo I've got a bunch of lobster tail here, some jellyfish, chili sauce. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Having chili sauce on a lobster, for me, almost feels like sacrilegious. Uh, what does that mean? It's like I feel like I'm breaking the laws of God. God said you may put butter and salt and pepper, and that's it. The chili sauce is good, mm -hmm. but it's overpowering. But I got to say, jellyfish texture with the kind of stringiness, chewiness of a lobster tail, it works. It made the lobster and jellyfish feel like they belong together, like Kanye West and Kim Kardashian. I think that jellyfish is really great when people want to add that texture in the food. It's an uphill battle to try to take jellyfish and try to put it into a, a proper high-end fine dining three-course meal. Overall, I'd call it a success. He's done it and it was a lot of fun. Among all the foods we featured in this series, jellyfish has to be the most difficult to turn into a premium product. Did you even know you could eat that? I found that out quite recently. It's stubborn. It has an untamable, coarse, rough texture. Really onion. weird dots on it. I yeah. was like, oh, new kind of onion. And it doesn't absorb flavors. If SpongeBob made cookies under the ocean, this is what they would be like. No matter how much you try to dress it up, jellyfish is still jellyfish. For you, which food had the most bang for its buck? So if you like it like this, I would choose the first one. I think that's when you can taste the most of it. You'll definitely like it like this. I want to give a big kudos to our final chef today. I'm going to give all my points and credit to the creativity of it. It would be fun to bring a friend out and be like, have you ever had jellyfish? And they'd be like, no, is it awesome? And I'll be like, well, decide for yourself. But would you pay the same money for that? Uh, from researching and shooting to editing and mastering, our 10-person Best Ever Food Review Show team works hard to roll out the highest quality travel food entertainment twice a week. If you like what we do here, please consider supporting our Patreon. Patreon allows fans of the show to contribute a monthly sum and receive a load of extras like early video releases, private Q&As, and beyond. To learn more about our Patreon, check out the link in the description box down below. And if you can't give or don't even feel like it, that's okay too. <laughs> We're just happy you're here. Twin, thank you so much for joining me today. We did it. <laughs> We're getting better at the handshake. Yeah.
Guys, you can follow Twin on Instagram here. Polite DMs only. Thank you so much for watching. We will see you next time. A peace. Giddy up. <laughs> to the next location. Yee!